Sea of Thieves has had a bunch of updates in the past six years and the game's content library has grown tremendously. However, many people don't realise that a whole load of content is vaulted and can never, ever be experienced again. In this video, I'm going over everything you missed out on and can no longer take part in in Sea of Thieves. Kicking us off is the Hungering Deep campaign, released as part of the Hungering Deep in May 2018, marking Sea of Thieves' first major content update. This involved players hunting down Merrick's journals who was located on Sharkbait Cove. Once all the journals had been collected, you could return to Merrick and he would teach you a new shanty. Players had to sail to the south of Devil's Ridge, all while playing the shanty, and it required at least five people to summon the Hungering One. Unfortunately, the campaign was removed and the Hungering One was turned into a random encounter following this event. It was very epic at the time, but at least the Meg wasn't removed entirely. The journals still exist, but have been updated to reflect the events of the Hungering Deep, not Merrick's run-in with the Hungering One. After this, Rare attempted to keep as many of their live events in the game as possible. Then came Cursed Sails, which was also time limited. Cursed Sails added the Brigantine and new Skeleton ships, however, the latter had a special live event that you can't experience anymore. The Skeletons claimed the outposts, which led to most of the shops closing and the NPCs were brought outside with massive discounts on their stock. This was because they were selling up shop and planning to leave the Sea of Thieves. Each outpost had a skeleton banner with a note declaring the time and place in which you could battle them. These were aligned with real world times, which was both cool and annoying. These crews would cycle across three weeks, with the third week even including a final battle with Wanda the Warsmith. There was a separate story quest which had you travelling around the map to speak to NPCs and read journals. Duke would point you to Golden Sands, speaking to Sharon would take you to the Weaponsmiths, which Wanda with an O will point you to Crescent Isle, sending you on a quest for Wanda's journals. After speaking with Salty and finding all three, you return to him and he sends you to Wanderer's Refuge. Once in Wanda's lair, you had to inspect several points of interest. Returning to Sharon awarded you with the Shores of Plenty sails, and then you could collect the other sails from the Ancient Isles and Wilds outposts. The skeleton ships remained in the game, but the outposts returned to normal with basically nothing changed. It's worth noting that the Skeleton Fleet world event used to be available in several regions, but as of Season 6's release, the world event was moved to the centre of the map where it has remained since, so you can't experience the Ashen Fleet anymore. Moving on to something you can do, subscribe to HelloFresh! As someone who is very busy with my full-time job and making videos for you guys, I'm often left with very little time to cook. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Join America's number one meal kit today and say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like, delivered right to your door. There's nothing better than a decadent sweet treat after a delicious meal, and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all new subscribers free dessert for life. That means you enjoy a totally free dessert item with every single HelloFresh delivery for as long as you're subscribed. I love cooking with my fiance, especially food that I know is going to taste good and I've never had a meal from HelloFresh that wasn't sublime. Ditch the meal planning blues and dive into HelloFresh's biggest menu yet with 45 plus recipes and even more market items that support your lifestyle. Click the link in the description or use my code and get 16 free meals plus free dessert for life while the subscription is still active. Rare did a pretty good job of adding permanent content in 2018, but switched to more time limited stuff in the run up to the anniversary update. This starts the mercenary arc. In February 2019, Rare introduced a friends play free campaign that allowed friends to hop on and try the game for free. The clue is in the name. They introduced the first mercenary voyage, the mercenary voyage of the rum runner. This was simply three maps, one gold hoarder, one order of souls bounty and one cargo run, followed by three X marks the spots containing the chest of a thousand grogs. This lasted from the 6th of February to the 6th of March. The very following month on the 6th of March was the first reaper run. Reaper runs were voyages that took place in the same region with bonus points for completing them with the reaper's mark, a flag that marks you on the map at all times. This was the Reaper's run of Wanderer's Refuge and forced players to head back and forth to it with Discovery Ridge and Plunder Valley as the other destinations. They added two more, which were the Mercenary Voyage of the Wilds and the Ancient Isles. This was basically a copy of the Rum Runner, just without the chest of a thousand grogs at the end. On the 20th of March, the third wave of Mercenary Voyages arrived. This was another Reaper run, this time in Shipwreck Bay, and then the same voyages as before, just in the Shores of Plenty and the Devil's Roar. At least these offered some really cool cosmetics, and I wish the Reaper runs came back as mid-season content. 
since we're not really getting anything in the mid-season anymore aside from the Emporium updates. Rare continued this approach after Anniversary with Black Powder Stashes, Dark Relics and Smuggler's Fortune, all of which added voyages which cannot be played anymore. Black Powder Stashes saw players having to dig up kegs instead of chests in different regions, visiting forts instead of normal islands. There were two Reaper Run variants also, with the same principle as before. These voyages were added in July 2019, but were removed in Dark Relics in August 2019. Interestingly, a very similar variant arrived in Season 9 as a Pirate Legend voyage, but for some reason was removed in Season 11 and hasn't been seen since. Dark Relics introduced what was essentially reskinned Order of Souls voyages, and mixing it with Gold Hoarder X marks the spot maps. You had to kill the skeleton crew and then dig up the Dark Relics. These ended in September 2019 with the release of Smuggler's Fortune. Smuggler's Fortune added Reaper's Grave Voyages that mixed Gold Hoarder Voyages and Merchant Alliance Voyages. This involved players digging up rag and bone crates and delivering them to sea posts. Again, they ceased in October 2019 with the release of Fort of the Damned. The rag and bone crates remained and can be found at forts and the Dark Relic items were brought back as quest items in the Adventures and then Season 11 special loot for the Order of Souls. But that's all that remains from these. Rare kept all major content in the game until Cruise of Rage, launching in February 2020. This was another time-limited voyage that had players heading to the Devil's Roar to obtain a chest of rage, and then using it to take on Skeleton Lords. This was the last time-limited mercenary voyage added, and was removed the following month when Heart of Fire released. Releasing with Heart of Fire in March 2020 was the Athena's Fortune Runner Thieves Haven. These were a mixture of riddle maps and X marks the spot maps, adapting the Reaper runs of the past, but at Thieves Haven, and new lower value Athena's Fortune loot was released. In this voyage, however, you didn't need to raise your Reaper's mark. This was not marketed as a time limited event, but was yet another victim of season 11, being removed due to low interest, since it was superseded by the Legend of the Veil. Vale. Arena was replaced with Arena 2.0 with the release of Ships of Fortune in April 2020, with the original version of the mode being vaulted forever. Sea of Thieves wouldn't see any new time limited content for a while, outside of some events, which we still rarely get nowadays. These changed over time, but I'm not going to count them since they were just rewards for doing the same existing content in the game. In October 2020, Rare launched Fate of the Damned, this new Halloween update that ran from October to December? This included a new voyage which essentially had you finding a lost item for an NPC and then this would lead you to a fight with Grey Marrow and to two of the six Flames of Fate. Ultimately, these voyages were just reused content. They had poor rewards and only released since Rare was planning on changing to seasons in 2021. Rare ended 2020 with the Festival of Giving, which was a collection of events. The main content were Gilded Voyages, but they often return each year. 2021 was a great year for Sea of Thieves and one of the best. This was the only year where there was no real time-limited content, since events were just based around rewards for stuff you can do anytime. It did have Duke teleporting around the map, where players would search for him each month with a mysterious shack being built at each outpost. This turned out to be a tease for Pirates of the Caribbean in Season 3, so I guess we can count Duke hunting as removed content. 2022 was the year FOMO was dialed up, again featuring 10 adventures. These adventures were basically worse tall tales, but they were time limited. They'd last only 2-3 to three weeks and disappear forever. They did advance the story quite heavily, but left a massive gap between the tall tales and the story of Sea of Thieves in 2024. If you want to catch up, I have a video here with all that you missed in any of the adventures. We also saw the removal of the Ghost Fleet World event. Rare removed it to signify Flameheart's plans were moving forward, and therefore his ghostly skull would be removed from the sky, with it, the World event. Rare planned for his head to burst and become the green fog we see in the trailer, now you can just hear it instead. Listen closely next time you watch it. Season 6 also saw the death of another beloved part of the game. This was the Arena mode. Arena was an entire separate mode added for competitive PvP in the Anniversary update and was removed due to low player base. The resources were meant to be used elsewhere and likely because Rare was already planning a new PvP mode to release in Season 8. 2023 saw two more time limited adventures, just like the previous 10, they were removed from the game after two weeks. Several mechanics have been removed or changed in the game, mostly due to them being regarded as exploits. The original and patched quick swaps had been removed entirely and can no longer be reliably performed. The former allowed you to swap and shoot instantly, and the latter allowed you to shorten the animation between weapon swapping by just sprinting. 
You can also no longer shoot through the ship, aside from the great stairs and cannons. You used to be able to shoot through the entire geometry. Two of the most powerful moves that are no longer usable are X cancelling for buckets or shovels. You used to be able to cancel each animation to bail water faster and dig faster, both of which were seen as too powerful. Fuck, I really miss the shovel cancel. Rare, why did you have to get rid of it? It wasn't hurting anyone. Lastly, the quest board is no longer usable. Oh, it's actually still in there. Nobody actually uses it. Ah, uh, figures.